Welcome, this is where nerds come to learn things. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. So this is CB radio which was in my flood, which was a year ago yesterday. Yesterday, uh, yesterday was the one year anniversary of the flood which wiped out my garage, my house, well both my garages, my house, everything. And um, resulted in me being homeless for a few months, oh, about seven months before I got back in the house and light. Anyway, here's a radio which was in there, which was in that flood. This one wasn't too badly affected, other radios which are much worse and all the other radios we've got here none of them have a chance letter which turns they're all, they're all rusted up so I think that um, they're going to require some extensive repairs these ones well this particular one here isn't looking too bad it's only got a little bit of sludge in the back here when the, the, um, the flood happened it was salt water the sea came in so um, it made things a bit harder because salt water kills everything and I flushed all the radios out with fresh water at the time, but obviously it's, it's not really retro resurrected them enough to be perfectly good. But this one seems like it's only barely got hit. This one's looking pretty good. So it's just got a bit of, I don't know, is that surface corrosion or is it silt on the back there? I'm not quite sure. But um, see it's sitting in there. On the back it's got some rust around these screws and stuff like that. So this probably isn't too bad, but what I had is a stack of radios which I purchased to do repairs on and to do videos and um, this particular radio here has got this little note in here from where I purchased it from which shows basically that it's not been done professionally um, you know they've got notes on there about 20 watts peak modulation 100% on a whistle it's like yeah audio is 100% like, yeah really that's not professional at all <laughs> so gives you an idea of what this thing's been put through so it's probably got some blood it might even have some stuff clipped or something I don't know um, but visually I think the salt water didn't really get to it I think it's only getting a little bit in the back um, so I'm checking out carefully what I can see there I think this one might have just escaped it It's just got a little bit just on that back edge, it's like it barely touched it. So I think I got, got away luckily, pretty luckily with this particular radio. So it's a KAPC 262E and the model is a 25 limited in case you didn't catch that. So, well, classic. So it's not the very original one. And so it's likely still has an original fault before I, because I haven't actually worked on this radio yet. If I had worked on it, it'd be that thing we ripped out and my own markings and stuff are put on it and that's not there so I haven't worked on this radio so it's probably okay as far as blood water goes but it's probably got some other kind of fault what that is I've got no idea yet we'll need to hook up my test gear and um, see what we find with it so this is a an interesting one so we'll, I don't know what faults on it I don't know but we'll figure that out so I've done a little bit of testing on this thing so far already and it's um, it does transmit, although you can't see it on here, it does transmit. Apple power's slow at 4 watts. It does receive, but the meter is stuck, so I'm just going to free that up. And usually you just get away with just by screwdrivering the adjustment that's just there. So let's just poke a hole through that tape. This is one of the radios where you can actually get to it. And usually you can just loosen that screw off a little bit and work it a little bit and it will come, come free. Usually. Yeah, to careful not to undo them too much, otherwise um, I'm just rocking it back into forge right now, just trying to free it up. If you undo them too much, you can actually make the meter movement fall apart, and then you you got no meter. <laughs> right, that is definitely stuck quite a lot, but that screw is freeing up. Still nothing yet. Okay, start loosening it. That is very very stuck. Sometimes you can't free it this way. And I'm doing it quite a bit more than I want to, and it's still not freeing up. I might have to undo the bottom side instead. Might be that side that's stuck. Can we get to that side? 
just so same deal, poke the screwdriver through the tape but sometimes you can recover meters by doing this, you don't have to do much more sometimes sometimes you have to replace it yes, yeah, side's definitely stuck that's moving the meter directly so that's the one that's stuck to it let's just try and work it just help free it up it's free but it's still stuck a little bit but it's moving now Right, so here you go. Now it moves, but it's still not 100%. It might free itself up with a bit of movement. By doing that, it might free it anyway. It does seem to be getting slightly better. See in there. I always try and rescue the meter rather than just replacing it. That's what it's transmitting. So, this is a bit minus. Oh, that's interesting. I was just touching something. Right, um, so that's at minus 73 dBm. Should be giving an S9 at that level. Both gains are right up. Make sure the switches are in places. They are. And turn those. It's a bit dirty. So, I think it did get splashed with water. Um, but that's right down there now does I does it move and transmit no so what's happened there is the meter's stuck so let's just uh, try and fix that might as well course a video of this I suppose So instead of sitting at the end of the scale when it's at zero, it's sitting right at the bottom, which is really not where it's supposed to be. So it might be just bent slightly. So you can just see the, the meter is moving, but so because of the meter's not currently a reliable state, you can't really adjust the uh, signal meter for that. So let's do some. Um, Sensitivity adjustment, say. Let's go down to uh, minus 115, which is one I tend to use. Oh, that's not what I think. I need to do something else. Uh, 115, you can just hear it. So, yeah. Sensitivity is not too bad. Yeah, it's pretty much peaked as well, really. That, that first stage is pretty good, so the rest are probably are as well. Yeah. It's not too bad. But as I don't have the RF, um, the audio output cable made yet for my um, CMU, because I've got the plug sitting right here. I mean to do it, it's sitting right there. <laughs> I just haven't made the cable yet. Um, so yeah, once I actually get that hooked up to the CMU, then I can do the site net management and stuff like that. I don't have my, my other side of the meter's not even here. It's in my other room. So I'm not actually set up properly for it right now. I'll be moving things around trying to get organised but I'm not there yet. Anyway, but you know it's ground reference and stuff like that so I like to try and keep ground referencing the right. I need to inject a audio signal now, don't I? With the RF going in, be good enough. It might be actually, yeah. Oh, I can't do both, does it? That's right. I can't do both measurements at once because I don't have it set up a GPIB. So yes, what I can do. Sign out. I can't inject an audio signal. Uh, okay.
There is always another way. Uh, right. I've got my Marconi type now. 26 by 965. Volume right up. Scratch down. Okay, now I've got something. Got currently it's 10 dB sign out. So it's adjust the sample level. Okay, with 12 dB sign out, I'm getting minus 105 dBm input with 70% modulation. Okay, or with 30% modulation. That's not very good actually. That's not doing very well. It's about 98 dBm. Thereabouts, minus 98 dBm to get 12 dB sign out. I do know that my Marconi frequency is slightly off on the audio generator. It's not exactly one kilohertz, so it may affect it. Let's run a BNC from the Roland Swartz over to the Marconi and try and use its own audio just in case that matters. In case the frequency is a bit of a consideration there. I think it does matter. So I'm using the CMU 200 audio output feeding into the audio input of the Marconi. Now my sonic meeting got a lot better, so it makes more sense. Obviously the frequency is a factor there, which is what I believe it would, would be. Because it's expecting its own frequency to be fed back into the comparisons with. So let's adjust the RF level again now. So it looks like it's about minus 102. Yeah. Thereabouts, about minus 102 dBm. So that's a bit lower than I thought it'd be. Yeah, it does display the audio frequency. I should check it actually. Let's turn the audio back to internal again. Internal audio, I'm getting about around 990 hertz. So it's just slightly off, which is affecting the uh, synod readings. But 990 is what I thought it was. So, yeah. Rodent Swartz is like it's bang on, it's like it's doing my kilohertz and Rodent Swartz, that's alright. So minus 102 is not very good. Let's make it a little bit tweak. Just very roughly, obviously it's not bloody perfect is it? And I'm not doing cinema band, I'm doing channel 1 so it's not going to be great. That one's pretty much peaked anyway. But it's, it's not, I'm not doing this right, I just want to see if I can get it there. Not really. These are pretty much there. I've got 13 there. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty much there. It's not going to do much more. They're all pretty much bang on. Yeah, well. I see. I just bet that sensitivity would be a lot better than that. I bet sort of minus minus 110 or so, at least.